Hello Internet and welcome to a new episode on my channel. The year is coming to an end and Christmas is just around the corner. For this reason here is a little helper video for all those who are still looking for some last minute ornaments for the Christmas tree and want to use a 3D printer. Here I show a method to create Christmas balls with Blender. For this I use different tools in Blender, especially the array modifier with an object offset. Then I use a lattice configuration to rotate and twist the parts against each other to create a more interesting model overall. So this is a really funny subject and it's a lot of fun creating Christmas ornament balls with Blender. Therefore, let's have a look how to do it. As usual in my Blender 3D printing series, I work with real-world measures and use the metric measurement system and millimeters as the unit. I also set the grid in the 3D view to the millimeter grid size. The process can be divided into the following steps. First, I create a Bezier curve for the path of a profile. Let's call it Profile Path. Always make sure that after the curve is created, the transformations are applied. In particular, scaling that is not applied can lead to all sorts of trouble during the further modeling. Then I created an empty object. Also here I make sure that I apply all transformation after I'm satisfied with the size and the position of the empty. Next, I set the origin point of the profile path to the origin point of the empty. This is very important. The origin of the profile path must be the origin of the empty. Then I set the arrow modifier using the profile path with an object offset. Here I use the empty object and use it as the reference object and insert the count of repetitions I want to have. By rotating the empty around an axis, the additional array objects are displayed. To do this, I divide 360 degrees by the count of repetitions I want to have. Then my profile paths are evenly distributed. By using the bevel function and adding a bevel profile, the individual profile path can then be equipped with a profile. With the taper object, the thickness of the profile pad can be influenced. For this purpose, I use a Bezier curve and use it in the profile path geometry property as a taper object. By manipulating the control points of the tape curve, I can control the thickness of the profile You can tweak the bevel profile to get a more fancy looking overall design.
to spice up the overall design a little bit, we can apply a lattice object to the profile path with the lattice modifier and twist the top and bottom object against each other. To have a hanger, I used a torus object, scaled it to match the overall size of the model and modified it to fit into the model. Finally, I joined this mesh with the rest of the model. The profile path are still curves and need to be transformed into a mesh model for final editing and 3D print preparation. Often you found that you have many many vertices and this puts your subsequent software tools under heavy load. So it's a good idea to decimate the overall count of vertices in Blender using the decimate modifier. Normally you can decrease the amount of vertices by 50 to 60% without seeing any artifacts on the surface of the model. Here's some final tweaks on the hanger and then let's start to prepare the model for 3D printing. The mesh model can be checked with the 3D printing toolbox add-on and any errors in the model can be removed. I check for manifold edges and have to and remove them using the add-on in, and in addition I'm looking for um, concave or non-planar surfaces and remove them using the mesh cleanup function. With the powerful slicer software Little edit editing is needed here as many problems in the 3D models are solved by the slicer. Afterwards, I can export the model as an STL file and import it into my slicer software. Here I use Cura as a slicer and preparing the model for, to print it on my Creality CR10S4. 
Depending on the geometry used, you can work with or without support structures. I also had very good experience with the tree support. This can be very helpful, especially for partially open structures and twisted models. The whole thing is printed on the Creality CR10S4 printer. I recommend to use thick outer walls with three layers and therefore set the infill to a lower value, let's say 10%. Because the ornament balls do not have to have a lot of physical strength, but it depends what you want to do with it. I recommend a layer height of 0-2 mm or less to get a nice and clean surface. I started with a layer height of 0-3 mm, but if you paint the model and later on you see all these little imperfections and the layer structure of the print process, so that's not so nice. Another important point is, the lower the layer height, the less support can be used or no support structures at all because the layers overlap better on each other. The printed models can then be painted or further processed using different techniques. Or you can combine them with glitter, artificial snowflakes or use them in combination with little LEDs. Okay, that was it for today. I hope this video gave you some interesting ideas and suggestions for your last minute Christmas ornaments preparation tasks. If this video was helpful and interesting for you, leave me a like and or subscribe to my channel. And if there is any comment or suggestion Use the comment section below, I'll be happy to answer your questions. I wish everyone a nice Christmas time, share some time with your loved ones. That's all for today, thanks for watching, bye Friedhelm.